one. Welcome to Tony Martinetti Nonprofit Radio coverage of Fundraising Day 2012 in New York City. We're at the Marriott Marquis Hotel in Times Square. With me now is Preeti Davidson, and she is the Director of Development for the Legal Aid Society of New York. Preeti, welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for taking time out on a very busy day. Um, your topic is converting supporters into event leaders. What, what type of event leaders are you thinking about? We do one major fundraising event um, every year. It's a corporate fundraiser for about a thousand people at the Waldorf Astoria in every May. Okay. Um, and we have two honorees. Uh, we do uh, an, one honoree from the, the legal community and one from the corporate community. Um, the Legal Aid Society is the oldest and largest not-for-profit public law firm in the country. Um, and we have an extensive board made up of um, representatives from the top law firms in the country as well with headquarters in New York. Um, and our board is incredibly active. So generally, we pick our legal honorary first, and it comes from our homegrown community of, um, uh, from the legal community. Okay. But uh, I don't see any reason to believe why this wouldn't work for uh, charities that have smaller galas and events, right? Absolutely. The, your model? It's, but, but we've done this for, well, we, well, we've done this event for 35 years. Okay. And um, I think in, in the last couple of years, what we've done differently is we've added a corporate honorary to try to expand our donor base from the legal community, broaden it to the corporate community, and also begin a fund foundation fundraising program and an individual donor program as well. Uh, okay. Now, you mentioned before we started that your model is different than traditional models. H how is that? Uh, um, I, I, think, I think one thing that sets us apart is um, the deep roots that we have within the legal community. Um, uh, there is no other um, charity that has the kind of commitment and the backing of the legal community. They give us about close to $9 million a year. Mm -hmm. um, and so that those are relationships that some of them are over 100 years old. And those are um, very long-term relationships um, that aren't necessarily have, easily replicated. You have donors who are over 100 years old? The <laughs> law firms. The law, law firms, firms are, the, yes, the, yes. The, the, yes. Some of the, our relationships with the firms are, are, are many, many years old. So um, we, we benefit from those long-lasting relationships. And um, our incredibly active board helps us pick our legal um, honoree. Um, and then we work closely with our with the legal honoree and with the with the board again to, to pick a corporate honoree. And we found that the model that works best is when the corporate honoree has some sort of a relationship to the legal honoree. Um, oh, okay. So there's a relationship there, a professional relationship. A professional relationship, and we're able to um, leverage the relationship between the society and the honorees, the honorees and their communities and their business communities okay. in order to raise um, as much money as now, we can. An event leader, uh, a gala leader, uh, or a leader of a gala of this sort could also be the chair. It doesn't necessarily have to be the honoree. Do, do you include that, the, the event chair in, in, your, in your work? We do have a chair structure. We have chairs, vice chairs. We have a dinner committee. And um, those are tied to giving levels, especially at the, 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 the vice chair and dinner committee level. Dinner committee is um, anyone affiliated with a firm or a corporation who gives us um, $10,000 and over, or an individual. And uh, the vice chairs are $25,000 and over. Generally, these are connected to our board. Uh, most of our board firms give at those leadership levels. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the chairs are chosen in a number of ways. The honorees have an opportunity to pick chairs of their own, um, and then chairs are also appointed by the firms or the corporations that give it the highest level, so that would be the fifty, hundred, and $150,000 range. Um, and then we have honorary chairs, which are chairs in name only, generally. They, they add, um, they bring a certain cachet to the event. It's usually a very recognizable name, mm -hmm. um, a, a publicly recognizable name. But even around the honorary chairs, is there expectations about uh, giving at a certain level or or bringing a certain number of tables to the to the event? No, there there is absolutely no expectation um, with the honorary chairs. There okay. there there are relationships that are held very closely by um, by our honorees. And um, but I, I would say that in general, honorary chairs after the event will will come back and make a gift to the society in honor of. Okay. Okay. The person. Okay. So, what's your advice about uh, identifying the right people to be the the uh, the honorary honorees? So, this is also where we've taken um, a little bit of a different approach, which I, I'm I'm hoping will will 
um, will become more popular because it's worked very well for us. We're not looking for household names. We're not necessarily looking for people who everybody is going to be, um, everybody would recognize um, if they looked at the invitation. We're looking for people who are committed to raising money for us in the year that they're being honored. And we're looking for people who may not have been necessarily honored in the past or sometimes over honored when lists are used over and over again. You go to the same well of people, you go to the same contacts, um, you don't necessarily yield the best results. And I think there are definitely, in New York is um, a really multifarious place with, with many, many um, very successful people from different walks of life. And we're thinking outside of the box when it comes to our corporate honorees and not necessarily looking for um, the name recognition, but looking for someone who's really willing to roll up their sleeves and help us. The, the commitment is more important. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And we're very clear from the get-go what, what the expectations uh, are and what the commitment is. My very is. next question. What, so how do you set the... First, how do you determine what the expectations should be from honoree to honoree? And that, that may vary from year to year. Um, it, it does. Uh, th so this is our, our primary event. This is this is the main event. We, we, we did two in the past, and as many organizations um, have done, we, we scaled back to one, and we put all of our resources, all of our staff time, okay. all of our energy into this one event. Was that, and we was that very recent successful. because of the recession? So, yes, it yeah. is absolutely due to the reception, okay. uh, recession. Excuse me. And I, it was um, probably about four years ago. Um, uh, I've been at the Legal Aid Society for three years, and I've I've helped oversee three dinners. The first year uh, was was very successful in my, in my tenure because our new president Finn Fogg um, became incredibly involved with this process. And and I have to say that the fundraising actually comes from our internal leadership, our president, our the chair of our board, our attorney in chief, members of our board are out there fundraising for us yeah. uh, uh, constantly. That's critical, and everybody doesn't enjoy that. They, they'd like to but everybody doesn't have that. Right. This um, is right. one of the most active boards that I've ever professionally been okay. involved with. So how about so then uh, the expectation setting for the honorees? So it, it's... it's uh, now, so oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to yeah. interrupt you. Sorry. Um, you're setting the expectation at the point where you're inviting them to be an honoree, Before right? they've not accepted. After they've, yeah, Absolutely. Not after they've it is committed. before they've accepted. Okay. So our model is is what, is what basically um, uh, the, we're looking for the trifecta. The society raises a third, the corporate honoree raises a third, and the legal um, on, honoree raises a third, okay. and and this is this is not necessarily a strategy that that um, we we set out with. It, it's one that's developed over the last um, three years. Um, so uh, in that first year, we're able to take this event used to raise just about a million dollars. In that first year, we we're able to raise two point four million dollars with and and that was sort of the year that that set the tone for for this model. So when we sit down with prospective honorees, um, and it's generally not a host of leadership going to talk to that honoree. It's generally the person holding holding the closest relationship. Okay. It's a one-on-one -on -one conversation, and we're very clear about what the expectations are, and it's somewhere between 800000 and a million dollars. Okay. And, the, and the expectations are in writing? The uh, expectations are are not in writing during the point of um, uh, where, when the commitment is being made. Afterwards, we do follow up with very detailed timelines, and um, we, we provide a lot of administrative support. Another thing that's been really crucial is that um, the honorees... Uh, in the in the last three years, have set aside um, some of their personal staff to help us, so that we always have a liaison in their office. Mm -hmm. We're working very very closely and and quite seamlessly on this project with them. Okay, okay. Um, are the expectations just about uh, money, but but uh, not into uh, sharing contacts and contact lists and the, vendor lists and things like that. The vendor lists and the contact lists, um, the business and personal contact lists, are made available to us by and, the honorees. Um, they're about part of the expectations. It is definitely part yes. of the expectation. Okay. Um, it, it's it's the roadmap to how we raise that that kind of money. Um, well, the other thing that we look at very closely is where are the common relationships, where the two honorees have a, a relationship in common, either with an individual, a firm, or a corporation, or where the the, the trifecta works really well is when all three of us have um, interest in the same entity. Okay. And as you're inviting people to be the honoree, because they haven't accepted yet, we're yeah. still just setting the expectations. Um, how do you explain that there's benefit for them to, uh, as being honored uh, to be honored? 
I think the Legal Aid Society is an incredibly prestigious and well-known organization. Um, uh, we have a, a very, very prestigious board, um, and so we're talking about people who are asking um, other Im important business people to participate with them in a venture that serves New York City. Um, there are over two million people um, living at or below the poverty line in New York City, and we address um, many incredibly crucial uh, issues for them, and I think that um, our, our reputation is really well known. Yeah. We've not had a problem. So, uh, and then for smaller charities, I mean, what they might do is emphasize the value of their work, their, the niche mm -hmm. that they serve in the community, and uh, help the honoree to recognize that being allied with that level of, with, with that type of work is valuable because we're talking about someone who's already committed to the organization right. and its work. So just thinking, you know, if, if someone doesn't enjoy the reputation that Legal Aid Society right. does, um, it's, it's really emphasizing your work and the of the alliance between the person right. or the corpor and or the corporation. Well, well funders generally want to help solve problems. So even for a, a smaller organization, if, if you're able to make the case for, for why you're relevant and why you're crucial to whatever community you're in, large or small, I think a funder is going to pay attention. Um, and, and, and I think funders are also interested in, in helping to raise the profile of worthy causes and, and using their name recognition in order to do that mm -hmm. as well. All right, so the next step, let's say the person has uh, agreed, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll be the honoree. What, what what happens the, now? Comes the sharing of the timeline and 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 support begins. We we actually actually prior to that during during the the courting phase, um, we prepare a, a packet of materials. It includes the videos. We do a video every year for our, for this dinner. Um, some years it highlights uh, clients and case studies. Um, some other years it highlights sort of our more our broader impact and and some of the um, larger issues that may not um, that we may not be known for in the communities. Um, and so that that. That uh, packet of information helps kind of situate the individual, especially the, the, the one from the corporate community, because they aren't as familiar with our work as the legal community is. And then um, after they've made the commitment, we set up, um, we usually do a breakfast to, to introduce them to our leadership, our, the chair of our board, um, mm -hmm. chair of our development committee, um, uh, myself and, and, and my, my top person, um, the president and the attorney in chief, and, and we, we it's a, more of a get to know you breakfast. Um, I generally like to go and meet with their office um, and, and the people who are going to be so on the ground. a face-to-face -face relationship a rather face than just by phone and email. It's absolutely crucial. Um, at, at some point, and, and sometimes it's, it's not always possible, but where possible, I highly recommend it. I also think that um, you end up actually becoming quite, you work very closely yeah, with them. You're and so you friendly, right? Enjoy I imagine. a yeah. close and friendly working relationship. And I think at the end of it, we all sort of breathe a sigh of relief because there are definitely ups and downs and, right. and, and we're kind of in it together in the trenches. Um, and how soon before, how early before uh, an event do you begin the, the, the process? Um, the Well, so we just had our event on May 10th, and I think that night we started talking about next year. Okay. Um, so we, we try to waste no time. It's, it's not always possible. We try to get our honorees secured as soon as possible. Ideally, before the end of the summer for a May event um, would, would be great. We would do a, a first round of letters that fall to their contact list. We also have the process of when we when we okay. when we obtain the contact list that we have to get it into our system and um, so there's there's some data entry involved there um, and preparing uh, ourselves uh, administratively to be able to handle um, the workload uh, at some point in in either. It, Early December, before before the season hits, or or if if for whatever reason we're delayed, um, in in early January we do a save the date. Okay. Um, yeah. And then we send uh, we send directed solicitation letters to a number of people that we identify on on the three lists: the society's list and the two honoree lists. Um, after that, uh, we we do a lot of legwork. It's a lot of getting in front of people and 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 calling our contacts and and keeping track of who's calling who so we're not when, when their interests um, when we're interested in the same um, uh, prospect that mm -hmm. we're not we're not mm -hmm. double calling right right Good, right because between the three of you there could be overlap and you there's a lot of overlap obviously so avoid that my yeah. office is responsible for making sure that and coordinating all the efforts okay um, and how about to follow up after the event with, with the chair or with the sorry with the uh, with the honorees um, we, we try to keep in, in close contact with the honorees uh, 
to be perfectly honest, um, we could do better in, in this realm. And I think there's a lot of uh, nonprofits that struggle with what to do after the dinner. Clearly, with the honoree from our legal community, they will continue to sort of go back and, and be a part of that mm -hmm. community. It, it's more of a challenge with a corporate honoree. They didn't they didn't come to us with um, a, 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 with a, with a relationship already established. And it, it, it's I think it's um, naive to think that be, even though they did great work for us over the course of the year, that we're going to have them as lifelong supporters. I think we've right. been very fortunate that we've had very generous honorees who've continued to support the society after being honored. Um, but we're still we're still trying to figure out how to continue to make that that connection beyond the event. We also, as a best practice, um, you know, we'll continue to communicate with people who came to the event and or made a gift to the event. But we don't circulate. We don't. We don't. Th their lists don't get absorbed into our database unless the person has has shown interest in being involved in some capacity. Okay. And when you're in the heat of the event, uh, these are May events. So in uh, early May or mid May, what, end of May, what, it's what, May, what yeah, May 10th. It's, a, it's early May. Yeah. All right. So so um, mid April to late April. What's what's keeping you up at night? What's what's really the most the, thing, the one or two things that you're most concerned about? Right. Two to three weeks before. Um, you know, we we do we do a lot of our fundraising on the front end. It's incredibly important, and I think part of the secret to our success that that and, and a best practice in fundraising that we've been able to um, get, I'd say, uh, two thirds to three quarters of our fundraising done before the invitation goes out. So I'm not stressing about um, uh, about hitting the goal at that point. I think okay. that there are. I think that the the stress and legwork comes over the course of January, February, and March. Where we're we're doing the bulk of of the, the solicitation fundraising. and fundraising right. in order right. to get the names on the invite, and then we found that first year um, we raised I think it was 1.3 uh, million or 1.4 million dollars um, before the uh, invite went out, and 800 thousand dollars came in after that. I think people want to be a part of a success, and success breeds success, yeah. and 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 we could use the money. Okay, but so what is it now? I'm going to ask you again. Yeah. Well, what the, the the couple weeks, two or three weeks before. Before, what is it that's keeping you awake? Is it more it's the, the details? details. It's yeah. you know, seating a thousand people for dinner is not easy. Um, uh, there are constant changes. Getting those lists, getting guest lists to come. I mean, there there are people. There are last minute changes that happen an hour before the event, and making yeah. sure that our ducks in a row. But I have to say that I'm I'm not stressing anymore. This is our third, my third year of doing this with a, with a great team and um, with a great with great event consultants. We use Susan Yulin Associates. They're fantastic, and um, I. I, I'm not stressing actually okay. in the weeks before the event. Okay. I, I'm, and this year, I actually enjoyed the event, <laughs> you did. which, uh, which, which okay. was a first for me. <laughs> and all right, so why don't you uh, leave listeners with just one tip? If you had to say there's one thing that they really should take away from converting uh, the uh, their their serious yeah. their their higher level yeah. com uh, donors and and committed people to to honoree, what, what would that be? Well, I, I, I think that we're very fortunate that, that philanthropy is very much a part of American culture, and it's been ingrained in, in all of us at some point um, to be involved in our communities and, and, and to give back. I think it's, it's, a, it's a, that's a deeply American construct. And I feel that, um, you know, converting a leadership in, into um, honorees, it, it's a process that takes time, and it's a process that, it, it's again, it's another level of relationship building that, um, you know, if we are able to make the compelling arguments um, to an outside audience that we know why our organizations make a difference in this world, um, that message is very clear. And I think that there are a lot of people who are incredibly receptive to that. So it, while it might take a little bit of time, if it's done the right way, you'll have lasting results. Thank you very much. Preeti Davidson is Director of Development for the Legal Aid Society of New York. It's been a pleasure having you as a guest. Thank you, Preeti. Thank you, Tony. My pleasure. It's Tony Martin Eddy, Nonprofit Radio coverage of Fundraising Day 2012 at the Marriott Marquis in New York City.